Hello there, everyone. Welcome to the Savvy Business Show. We're just going to do a couple of tastes here. As you can see, I'm trying to get onto my phone to make sure that you guys can hear us. And I should definitely not speak that loud because my speaker just told me not to do that. Um, but if you're just coming here, I'm here with Chris. If you're watching the replay, my phone. Sure Oop, there we go. Can you hear me? I am definitely live. So, Chris, I'm going to have you just say something for us just quickly. Sure. Good morning, Hanukkah. Nice to see you and glad anyone is available to watch this today. Welcome to everyone who's watching. All right. Let's see. So, it's a little bit delayed on Facebook. Yes, okay. and we can hear you. All right, so we can start. We are we have done all of our tastes. If you're watching the replay, you want to forward on a little bit. Uh, but we're about to start, and I'm so excited about this topic today because this is a huge one at the moment. Um, burnout is definitely something that all of us want to prevent, and specifically if you are an entrepreneur, this is so important. And I'm here with Chris, who is from Priority Wellness, and and she's going to take a minute to just tell us a little bit more about herself and how she came to the work that she does today. So hello, Chris. Welcome. It's such an honor to have you here today. Thank you for your time. Oh, thanks, Hanukkah. And I'm thrilled to be here. Uh, so to tell your audience a bit about myself, uh, again, my name is Chris Vasiliadis. My company is Priority Wellness, and I am a national board certified health and wellness coach. Uh, I've been doing this work for, it'll be 10 years this fall. And how I got into this work is somewhat indirectly. Uh, three years before I started my practice, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, which is a chronic disease of the central nervous system. And that ended up being my own wake up call for my health and wellness. Uh, after my diagnosis, I spent a lot of time getting a bunch of different tests done and figuring out things that I was deficient in and made a whole bunch of lifestyle changes as a result of that. So health and wellness became more and more important to me personally. Uh, at the time I was doing marketing consulting. And so I had been an entrepreneur for a while and where wellness became so important to me such that I wanted to change my career in some area of health and wellness. And through networking and working with a career coach and, and speaking with some other people, I met someone who called themselves a health coach. Uh, at this time, this would have been late 2007 or so. And I, when I met this person at the time, there weren't a lot of people who called themselves health coaches or wellness coaches. There were a lot of business coaches, life coaches, career coaches and such. So when I met this person and said, gee, I'm curious, how did you come to call yourself a sports medicine. So that was how I spent the bulk of 2008 and then hung out my shingle per se in the fall of that year. So when I began my practice, I initially focused on stress management and over the years now focus on managing energy. And we can get into that in terms of how that relates to burnout. Yes. Um, yeah. So, so many. So such an interesting like way how you got there. I love that this was a personal journey for you. I always mm -hmm. feel when you're a coach and you've been through the journey, it just makes it so much more powerful. Um, and then the other thing is, I really just want to commend you for the fact that you did this in 2008 and you hung up your shingle at like right in the fall as the economy was crashing. Um, and so I, I mean, wow, what a brave women to do that. I think most people then were like, hold on um, to what you got. And, um, and it's just amazing that you've done it. And now you've been in it for 10 years now, basically over 10 years, it's 11 years. And, um, so that is sort of like for our, for our listeners, I kind of want to bring that back to really following your passion because you're going to land on your feet as, um, Chris had just told us. Now, um, Chris, I, did I interrupt you or was like that sort of the no, story that's that you, fine. that's it. Cause I now want to, I kind of want to shift gears and I want to go into, um, the, the big topic of burnout, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I want to know what is it? 
What does it look like? I mean, I think some of our users or our um, viewers or listeners may not know exactly what it is. So what is it? How do you know you have it? Um, What are all the names that it goes by? Because I know there's adrenal fatigue and there's burnout and there's like all these terms. So if you could clarify and tell us a little bit more about that. Sure. So when I use the term burnout, I'm focusing on the definition around you just feel depleted and you feel exhausted physically, mentally, emotionally. And how that can show up are a bunch of different ways. You could be feeling more a little extra irritable than usual. You might have a lack of appetite. You might feel extra distracted. You might be using terms to describe yourself like I'm so overwhelmed or I'm so busy or I can't, I'm feeling like I'm just keeping my head above water. And you might be forgetting things more often than not. You might be feeling, you might be noticing that you've been mentally kind of distancing yourself and checking out, or you're addicted to being busy. You always have to like have something to do and continue doing that. You're constantly on autopilot. Any of those things kind of as a one-off or once in a while, that's really not burnout. But if you find yourself in any one of those symptoms for at least a couple weeks or more on a chronic basis, you're probably approaching burnout. And and usually deep down, we kind of know if we're feeling burnt out. Um, We're just not feeling ourselves and not feeling the same way. You might even feel a twinge of anxiety or depression too. And again, not in a clinical sense. So um, it's just, just feeling more depleted than you know you're capable. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I have to say, so I, when I was um, working on Wall Street, I definitely had burnout. And back then, this was right when the economy was tanking. I actually, um, in February of 2009, walked in and I was like, I'm done. Um, and, but, but for me, it definitely was like also sleepless nights. Mm-hmm. Lots of sleepless yeah. nights. Insomnia. Um, definitely. Yeah, insomnia for sure. More anxiety than usual, which is difficult to pick up. I feel like if you're already uh, running a very fast paced life, I know now looking back at it, I'm like, well, of course I was burned out. I was so freaking anxious all the time, uh, which mm-hmm. is what makes your adrenals work harder than they need to and your cortisol levels and all those things. Um, and so for me, that I didn't even know how to or that I had it, number one. Um, For me, it was like I needed to quit my job. And I think that's such an extreme thing to do for people. So now I, like, you know, instead of doing that, like I needed a career, like a career change. So that's why I had to to change. But if you're in a very... um, fast paced career and specifically us as entrepreneurs we Mm. can really burn the candle at both ends and the younger you are this is also probably why i didn't notice it back when i was on wall street i was in my like mid-20s so these things didn't matter right um but now we're getting older and specifically if you're an entrepreneur like how do you make sure that you don't burn the candle on both ends and then eventually are left with no candle right <laughs> yeah you're, you've all you've got is the witch with a little bit of the wick left exactly which by the way like just to like like really uh, push that home or whatever that expression is is like uh that means you won't have a business left right and this is something well, that we all need to get very serious about I guess. it's true you know we can laugh and joke about it and i think i think a lot of it hanukkah is a lot of society's messages that we get about like you know keep being busy push through are, are not helping us when we when we try to see like, okay it's not normal it's not okay we are not robots no. we cannot just keep going and going and going without a break Absolutely so not. so it's one it's first of all realizing that okay to be behave in that way on a consistent basis isn't sustainable no. um, it something's going to give sooner or later so and when you're an entrepreneur it, it's kind of a blessing and a curse in that you get to control your schedule um, I hear a lot of folks when they first start being entrepreneurs getting used to uh, it, it's a little bit of a transition getting used to not working kind of the office hours type thing. And yeah, you can, you basically can create your own office hours. And again, that can be a blessing and a curse 
uh, you can work as long as you want or as little as you want. And sometimes the, as long as you want goes into excessive territory. And the fact that we have these things, oh, yeah. uh, you know, we're theoretically connected 24 seven. So, uh, so it's, um, it's using the capability that we have to create our own schedule to create some structure around that and, and set some boundaries around our schedule and when we're available. In making space, um, there's a quote by Cheryl Richardson, who's a internationally known life coach, who says, when your life is crazy busy, you don't need time management, you need space. Yeah. And I, I so much agree with that. It's, it's making the space to first discern, look at your energy, doing kind of a quick hit energy audit. Where am I getting my energy from? And what is depleting my energy? And where... Can I make some perhaps hard choices in how I need to adjust my energy? What do I need more of? What, I, what is it that I'm trying to create in my business, in my life? How am I trying to contribute? What's going to fuel me in a positive way? And what is depleting that fuel? So, mm. so some things that can give you energy are certain types of activities, certain ways of thinking, certain attitudes you hold, certain types of people. And the same thing on the things that can deplete your energy, certain ways of thinking, certain um, types of ac activities or, or uh, ways that you talk to yourself and certain people can deplete your energy too. So it's, first of all, creating the space to get clear on, all right, what's giving me energy, what's draining me energy, and, and it's time for me to make some hard decisions on what do I want to keep more of in my life and what do I want to reduce in my life. Mm. Yes, and this is, I think, where all of us get ourselves in our panties in a bunch, so to speak, right? Where yeah. we, um, because we are taught, like, to not be mean and rude and um, to kind of behave in a certain way to please others, I feel like, mm -hmm. a lot of times when we're growing up. And I think that's where if you're not, um, if you don't know yourself very well and you're constantly yesing everybody else and you're making sure that everybody else is okay, and this is a female thing specifically to do, we, we tend to suffer from this uh, a, li a little bit more than men do, um, then I think it becomes very hard for us to do that boundary because we feel like we're going to be mean when we have to say no to people because that's I know for me that's how I start to create space in my life is by saying no to certain things um, so true. right and knowing how to say that and and this is like a muscle right Chris would you like agree that Absolutely. this this is this is not gonna you're not gonna get it right the first time and that's okay yes right the, the ability to say no in in a way that honors what you need is definitely a muscle to build. Yeah. And and so yes, if people need permission to start saying no, then yes, you have it. <laughs> yes, we're giving and, it to you today. And that right doesn't here. mean that you do it all the time. It 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 it's with it's being clear on what's what's essential and what's important for you. Because when you start saying yes to everybody else, you're meeting everyone else's agendas. And it's really and it's really important to prioritize what's important to you and what your agenda is. Because if you say yes to everybody else, you're getting, you're short shifting yourself. Yes. And and that's not going to help you create what you're here to create and contribute. Exactly. That's not going to help you and your brand if you're, if your default is to go ahead and help. And so I'm not saying never you know, be of assistance to anyone else, but don't do it to the expense of sacrificing what's important for you and what your priorities are exactly. in your health and in your business. So important. And I think the other thing for us as entrepreneurs to remember here is this in your business can also look like you have to say no to certain things. Like maybe it's yes. not even outside of your business, but you can even bring it into um, you know, or your outside life, you can bring it into your business. Like if you're someone who has, who is very creative, right? And lots of entrepreneurs struggle with this. We are super creative. We are not short of ideas. We got a million and 10 and oh my God, if I could just clone myself, like things would be like, there would be so much going on. But this is very important where I love what Chris just said, said there, where you really want to highlight what it is that you want to create. So what are your goals? And then really bring being true to yourself on that for sure. Yeah. And really, 
honoring what you need. And when you, if you feel like you're approaching burnout, literally stopping and asking yourself, okay, what do I need in this moment? What do I need now? And that might be different for different things. So you might just need to physically, if you've been sitting at your desk for four hours and haven't given yourself a break, you might just need to get up and walk around Mm -hmm. and give yourself a break. I generally suggest giving yourself your brain a break about every uh, 90 minutes or so. Mm -hmm. Um, Because you, if you think of your brain, it's got a fuel gauge, just like your car has a gas gauge. And you don't want to be pushing on when that gas gauge is empty. You're not going to be as creative. You're not going to be able to solve problems as easily. So it's okay to give yourself a break and physically get up and move away from the heads down work that you're doing Mm. once in a while. And that was such a huge lesson for me. Um, just like I give myself breaks, but I tend to work in this push ment- mentality. Mm-hmm. And I had equated ambition with push yes. versus if I, I can still be ambitious and I can get a lot done and I can be super productive without it feeling like that when you're like really just like pushing things out of the way, right? Like, I um I think that that's important to to realize is that just because you're going to give yourself breaks doesn't mean you're not going to do anything. In in fact, you're going to be right. way, way more well, productive. Yeah, in fact, studies have shown that when you do do those brain breaks about every 60 uh, 90 to minutes to 2 hours, you increase your focus by 30%. Wow. And if if you need further enticement for that, Uh, Google instructs their employees to use 20% of their time however they want. So they can daydream, they can go for a walk, they can play foosball, they can take a nap. So if it's good enough for Google, because they find that that fuels innovation. Mm. So if it's good enough for Google, it's good enough for us. So it's not, I think people think it's wimpy to take a break. Oh yeah. There's this like badge of honor with the pushing, with the being busy. And I'm trying to throw that out and, and create a new way of, professional women especially to operate and function effectively and so yes it is okay to take a break and you need that to recoup you need that to regroup just like your car needs a tune-up every so many miles to keep functioning properly we need to recoup and and regroup to function properly i love that yeah and that's so important so the other thing um that's coming up for me there google does a lot of interesting things google also apparently has a fail uh, division where literally they have to fail. Like their job is to create the craziest thing that you can think of that won't work, um, and fail at it, which I thought was so interesting because we're all just so, um, trained in our brain to like succeed, succeed, push, 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 instead of let things happen for you. Right there. Uh, yeah. And, um, I don't love the word fail. It, you always learn no matter what you do. You all, you try something and it works and you learn something from that. And if it doesn't work, then you learn from that too. So you take that lesson and then apply it forward. Exactly. Exactly. I love that. Um, so the other thing that I know that you're doing at the moment that I want to hear a little bit more of is the fact that, um, right before we get there, I forgot, I'm looking at my notes and I forgot that there's one more little question that I want to ask you before I get there. So can you, um, just like tell us what are your thoughts? Like, what are your thoughts? Like in your vision for work-life balance? So I don't love the term work-life balance for a a few reasons. Um, One, I feel like their work and life are very intertwined these days. Again, given things like the internet, given things like our phones, given the fact that people either work from home part-time or full-time. So it's all very intertwined. So that can feel kind of tricky for people to, to manage if they think, okay, well, how do I balance work and life where it's so connected together? And I feel like people feel like it's unattainable. Mm. Um, And so instead of prioritizing work-life balance, what I typically suggest is prioritizing inner balance. Because if you can be balanced from within, if you can find a way to ground yourself and and, and connect to that quiet place that always exists within, 
then everything's going to function better. Mm. If you try to, if your life is chaotic and you try to create balance from that chaos, you're just going to create more chaos outside. So it's, it's finding a way to first be able to connect inner wise, whether that's, whether that's meditation, whether that's just focused on your breathing, it could be journaling. There are a variety of ways to ground yourself in an inner way. Then you can actually be balanced at work. What a novel idea. Yes. And are balanced outside of work. But everything just functions better if you come from that place. Mm. So that's what I try to profess more. Yes, I love that. So it's more of the balance within, the grounding within. Um, yes. And I, again, can so relate to that. Like, I, um, I don't think a lot of people are aware of this, but I actually suffered from depression in my like tweens let's call them my tweens um and then like i um went myself off of depression medication at age like 21 and um never and i vowed to never go back on it that's a story for another day but what has been amazing is like my journey from that day to now and how i've managed to find that interconnectedness because that was mm -hmm. what was missing that was what was causing a lot of chaos and you know um uh hit, like yeah, just chaos. Um, and then the other thing I think that was so key for me that really helped me to get centered and grounded was really living a healthier lifestyle, like ch like looking at what I'm eating, eating real food, and then also making sure that I'm exercising a lot. Exercise is truly key for me. And I'm reading a book at the moment called The Three Season Diet, forget who is by, but um, it's all about this like eating more it's an Ayurvedic book and I'm mm -hmm. like wanting to get into this a little bit more but it's all about how we have totally lost um our rhythm and our connection to the natural rhythm of the earth right like we are mm -hmm. working longer hours we're not like we're not working with the cycle of the sun and the seasons and all of those things but speaking about books Someone that I know, and she may be on this call, is uh, writing a book. I am. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? And like, where are we going to be able to find this thing? When are we getting, going to be able to find it? What it's about? Like, just tell us. Sure. So the book that I'm working on, uh, the current working title is uh, the main title is Ignition, and the subtitle is A Professional Women's Guide to energized burnout proof health. And I'm planning to self publish. I'm on as we speak, in fact, right before I got on the call today, I'm finishing up the edits on the second revision of my manuscript, which I'll be handing off to my editor by the end of this month, and uh, starting to work on the cover design of the book, and getting it out to some beta reviewers. And so depending on my editor's feedback and beta reviewers feedback, that will determine how much more work I'm going to have to do <laughs> when it's done yeah. in an ideal world. Uh, I'm looking at holiday time, early 2019, Perfect. but we'll see what happens. I, I'm looking to, um, that that's a loose deadline that I have now, but I am willing to push that back a bit. If it, if it's going to help it be more quality without me being too perfectionistic about it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, we'll see how much work I have to do after this next release. But yeah. That's where I'm at right now. But okay. it's basically, uh, it's a combination of stories and my lessons learned from doing this work for so many years. And it's, it's real world um, solutions, um, tips, exercises, questions you can ask yourself that will help you in energizing your health uh, and avoiding burnout. I love it. And do we have a name for the book yet, or is that a secret? Oh, yeah. The working title right now, and we'll see, um, the main title is Ignition, mm -hmm. um, and the subtitle is a Professional Women's Guide to Energize Burnout Proof Health. Oh, I love that. Now, that actually brings me to the next thing, because I did interrupt you while you were talking about yourself earlier, um, and you were introducing us, yourself to us. So who who do you work typically? Who do you work with, Chris? Like, who is oh, your sure. ideal client? Like, or you know, who do you accept into your practice? Sure. So I work a few different ways. I have 
private clients, which can be men or women. My specialty is, are women who feel like they're at or approaching burnout. Mm -hmm. uh, and I work with those clients over the phone. So they can be anywhere on the planet. Um, and, uh, and my specialty also tends to be professional women who are age 40 and above uh, who are in that place. Uh, so that's my private client space. I also work in corporate settings where I can act as a dedicated health coach for a company's employees. So, I'll, and I can do that both remotely and on site. Uh, so I'm typically brought in either through a wellness initiative in the company, through their HR department, or through a manager or for a smaller company's owner of the company. Uh, I also work in a healthcare setting where I'm a health coach for a doctor's patients, uh, helping them make lifestyle habits that improve their health. Uh, and I also speak in a variety of settings. Uh, I speak on managing your energy, avoiding burnout, uh, mindfulness, and stress. Those are my main topics. And I do that at networking groups, uh, webinars, and also at different conferences. I love that. I love that. And you're going to be speaking actually at a conference coming up. From, it's the Metro Waste Conference, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to be uh, a panel speaker at the Metro West Conference for Women in Framingham on Thursday, September 20th. Uh, and we actually just came up with our panel's theme, which is uh, called Me Time for Our Time. And the subtitle is uh, The Ripple Effects of Self-Care. I love that. So, as you might imagine, I'll be talking very likely uh, a bit about burnout. And, yes, and, yeah. I love that. Now, okay, so then the other question is like, where can we find you? And if you're watching the replay, where Chris is gonna drop all of this, like all of the links to what she just said for us in the replay of this call. Um, so yes, Chris, tell us like, where can people get you? So people can find me on the web at prioritywellness.com. That's my website. And uh, from there, you can link to my company Facebook page as well. Uh, I believe it's at Chris V Priority Wellness uh, on Facebook. And that's where you can find me. Yay! So I s appear to be frozen on the screen. Let's hope that's not really happening. But I want to just thank you so much again, Chris, for being here and for our viewers and listeners Thanks, to listening Martha. to a little bit more about how we can um, prevent the burnout. And really, guys, if you want to know more about Chris, do visit her website, ask her questions, ask us questions if you any have anything, and please do avoid a burnout. Thank Thanks you. so much, Hanukkah. I appreciate being here today. Of course, of course.